So you go up the homes? If it's a I lot like that? based off what other people, like that one was a new build, so I just search back in the history and see what the lot sold for, because the lot has to sell first. Clebio. Clebio, okay. Um, like once you get to a thousand, it's thirty though. That's just email uh, contacts that you put in. Gotcha. For text message, if you do a thousand text messages, like I said, it's pretty much on you. When uh, however much you do. So when you the when I always wonder like when you send emails, like what do you have to have your own email at? I'm guessing or how does that import? Like it's gotta be. Yeah, yeah, it's important. So you put in what, your email. Okay. So like uh, ovation at ovationequity.com, whatever. Yeah. That's what will be in here, and it'll be master sending it. Same. And how, what I always wonder is, do they? How does it get not marked? Because the moment we add ovation get equity gets marked spam. How do, kind they, of screwed. how do they do that? We're screwed. So I don't. How do they? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because a bunch of my buddies I've been trying to ask, like, what are they doing? So. I don't know. So, let's see. Question. I feel like that wouldn't be like. Oh, so what they use is a. For the text. Well, it tells you for a text message. After you send so many messages, they switch you to a, a short code, which is like a four digit code. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just for text messages. For emails, what do they use? So, that's how they get past it on emails. They use a toll free. And then after you send so many messages on a toll free number, they switch you over to a, a four digit number. So then you'll have like a. Oh, like two, five. Yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Or a, a six digit number to yeah. where it's like, oh, you, it's just a service connected to your phone. Yeah. So therefore, it's not going to blow your exact number up or your personal number up. That you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it won't cla uh, classify that as spam. You'll still be able to use your personal number. But if it's spam, it'll spam through that 2264 yeah. number. You know what I'm saying? I'll make a decision tonight what I want to do. Okay. But, um, yeah, like I said, you can use both independently or you can use them both together. But that alone, like I said, will help you as far as, like I said, communicating to people on a whole, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Standpoint. You're, you're, you're not that out of my life. Like I said, less than an hour. Ten minutes. Okay. Five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> five, five minutes. You got all 200 people can email. I spoke with my associate Joseph uh, in regards to that lot you got on, uh, that you're looking to sell on Pathwood. Awesome. I mean, does, do you mind if I confirm a few things? Okay, so I just wanted to make sure it was a residential, uh, single family lot. Uh, is it about 2,500 square feet? Is it 25,000 square feet? <laughs> right? Oh, man. 2,500, okay, gotcha. And I did have a few questions. Is, has the soil been tested? Is it, you know, it is residential, so is it, you're able to build on it, correct? Okay. Gotcha. Okay, and is there any like um, connections that are ran to it, such as like a septic tank or something along those lines? It's like a, yeah, residential. Okay, and how did, I mean, if you don't mind me asking, how did you, how did you acquire it? Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, nice. So was that was that house that I guess I got burnt down? Is it was it yours originally or oh okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right, so you know how how soon were you looking to kind of close it and and kind of just get rid of it? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, nice. And do you have to consult with anybody or is it, you know, just you and... Okay. Gotcha. Mmm, I see. Gotcha. Okay, awesome. Uh, I mean, if we came in, you know, all cash, covered all the closing costs, you know, was it, you know, what, what kind of price range were you looking to get it at? 25, okay. And like I said, you know, if we came in all cash, is there any wiggle room as far as that 25? Twenty-three. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Um, I mean, if I were to bring it to my finance team and, you know, they said something around 20, I mean, would 20 be something you would be comfortable with or would he be comfortable with? 22. Okay, I mean, do you mind if I put you on a brief hold real quick and let me see if I can bring some of this information that I have to my, uh, my financing team and see what we can come back at? Okay, all right, give me one second. I'm gonna put you in a brief hold, okay? All right. Can you help me with this? Yeah. I don't know what to eat. I don't, I don't know if I should just bring it to Kish or like. Bro. Sounds like he's super ready though, huh? Yeah, he is. 25k. How much did, uh, I don't know, Victor said like a number, was it usually per acre? It's like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, like, how we do, like, a lot size. No, okay, that sounds like a lot. That's not That's not even an acre. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a residential lot and buy some houses, though, so I guess that's a And I guess it has a lot of connections because he said it had burnt down. The house before that was on there burnt down, so I'm pretty sure it has, like, all the plumbing and stuff. Electrical and all that. So... Yeah. Is it something I bring to Kish? Yeah, think? bring it to Kish because you know, like, I don't know too much about it. Yeah. I actually do want to listen to this. Kind of see what you said about it. Sing? Ball beer. Ball beer. Hey, Kish. Um, so there's this one, I don't know if you could help us out with it. It's yeah. the one I'm currently on right now, I got him on hold. Yeah. Um, but his name is, um, it's a lot, but I don't know how to. This one? Yeah. Um, right now he, he wants to sell it for 25, mm -hmm. but I don't know how you do a lot. Like how do you price a lot? kind of all about what the area, the, the value of the homes are going for. Um, let me see here. Because that lot even looks so small. Yeah. I don't think anybody's building anything on that small of a thing, man. Yeah, because he said he had a, uh, a house built on it and it had burnt down. So I'm assuming it has like the connection still, maybe. I don't know how that works if it's burnt down. It's not a good area. I want to waste her. I mean, if it's like 300K homes, then it's worth it. But yeah, these things are going for 200K. If that. Let's see here. Sulfur. See the lot sold for twenty five thousand. Yeah. Built on it, so I'll tell them we would probably need to be around five ten k. Okay. For that small of a lot. Okay. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good. I'll tell them. All right. Appreciate it. So you go off of the homes. If it's a I lot like that. Based off with other people, like that one. It was a new build, so I just search back in the history and see what the lot sold for, because the lot has to sell first. Okay. But typically, residential lots, I, mean, I want to be anywhere between like 10 15K max. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Appreciate it.
Hey, Mr. Singh? Hey, so I just got in, I got in contact with my finance, uh, my finance team. And, you know, they were saying, you know, based off of the area and, uh, you know, it, I mean, typically, you know, that's uh, something we're going to have to build on. Um, so we would have to be in that 10, that 10,000 range, that five to 10,000 range. Now I know, you know, you did say, you know, your, your father is the ultimate, you know, deciding factor. I mean, if you want to run that by him, um, to be honest, that's probably the best we could do, um, is be in that range. If you want to reach if you want to reach out to him and, and talk to him and ask him, uh, how he felt about that, you know, uh, you know, just run it by him, see what he thinks. And, you know, if you, you know, if he thinks it's something he wants to move forward with, uh, I'll probably reach out with you in a few days and see where things are at. Um, but as, but as far as you know, an offer that's kind of where we stand at. Um, uh, but yeah, if you want to bring it to him, and you know, if he thinks it's you know something that he would like to do, then uh, just just give me a call, okay? All right, thank you so much. Bye bye. Bro, he put me on mute as soon as I put him on mute. It didn't even work. He, he fucking muted me. You, you can tell? No, because yeah, because you can hear somebody in the background. And as soon as I muted it, he, <laughs> he muted himself. That's smart. I was like, damn. I don't know what he's going to say. So what did, he, what did he say about the, you know, our drop? He's, he's like, like, eh, no. He wasn't going for it. Yeah, he was like, no. Mm -hmm. I told him, like, you know, if you want to run it by him, he's like, yeah, I can run it by him. I don't think he's gonna say at twenty five k. I mean, it's it's. If you're at twenty five and somebody offers you five, yeah, I mean, what a coincidence that like the the law decided it. Yeah. So for twenty five k, you probably saw that. It was like, yeah. there's no way they can pay me that. But. Yeah. So. Oh well. Not sure. Okay, yeah, that's why I texted you later because we were doing training this morning, but usually my afternoon day set aside to do smaller calls, but what's going on? What can I help you with? Yeah, so the first big thing is with the, the leads. Um, I got two new numbers this morning. Okay. I've been doing the new getting those numbers. Yeah. I've been going through like the logs that my EPA has. Like, I've had him for over six months. Like, yeah. Long time, and he's been pretty good in the past, like in other markets, like three to five a day. I mean, I've been trying to listen through his calls, but it seems like people are just so infuri infuriated that it doesn't even matter what he would say. Like, that would just be one of like the coolest leads ever if he even got them through like a call. Yeah. Um, and I've had this issue before. I did Bradenton and Florida for a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what it is, but it's just been days of getting like literally nothing. Um, would you consider him a really good caller? Yeah, he is pretty good. Um, one of the problems I had with him was he's so good to the point that he sometimes even wants to try to convince people if they're not interested. Like, he goes above and beyond on that. He's never had an issue in other markets with getting leads. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you want to pull up his numbers and we can look at it and see if there's anything with his numbers that shows a red flag? Yeah, that'd be great. I'm going to share my screen. Oh. I think I have to allow you to, let me see. Okay. I have that thing that you mentioned in that um, call. I have it set up like this. Okay. So I can see like logged calls and everything. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, just leave it for he really hasn't gotten anything. Yeah, no, I can do like all Yeah, the start the, do the 11th to today. It says six, but like several of them were from Monday and then everything just died. Gotcha. Every wrap up time. 
Well, one, the wrap-up time is really long. Um, typically, our agents are around eight seconds from the average wrap-up time, so that means he's sitting, waiting uh, by doing some shit during calls, like between calls. Because, I mean, 41 seconds, it can start to go up there when you get, like, tons of leads because then it takes several minutes to write all the information and that obviously from a buncher at eight seconds or a buncher at 10 minutes, right? It's going to kind of go up a bit, but personally that's way too high. So I'd be talking to him about that. Um, I mean, is he using an old script potentially? Is he not using the new script? Cause that makes a big difference. Um, I've tried both. Um, with the feedback he had about your script that you uploaded. Okay. Um, and he's been getting quite a few people who have just been like, okay, then give me an offer. And then just like, they're like really lightly. Um, but I, I tested, you know, the script that I had in your script too. Okay. I think I'll pull up, let me pull up mine and we'll compare. Keep yours up. I was just gonna look at mine so I can compare. So, yeah, average wrap-up time is about 11 seconds uh, with every agent getting, on average, about 10 leads a, a week. Um, right now, the average talk time, that's pretty good, 23 seconds. Average wait is about 20 seconds. Um, a couple factors with that either it could be internet, which means you don't have enough leads, um, whatever. But let's do 11 to 18. My callers in the same from the 11th to the 18th with 40 hours on the dialer have about 2,500 logged calls. Um, and the call paid per hour is right around. 55 to 60. So essentially just double. Essentially double on most times, and then half on the average wait time, uh, basically a quarter of the average wrap up time. Um, I mean, one agent's really tough, right? Like, that's why I always push somebody to do at least three, is because then you compare, right? If, two, if all three are not getting leads, then it's probably something with the leads. If one is hap usually it's going to happen where one's going to be really good, one's going to be average, and one is just going to be continuously bad. So I can't tell you one way or another if it's the agent or like how much are you listening to his calls. Like I don't. We do a lot of training with our agents, right? And it's it's not just looking at the numbers. I would say. I know it, I hate to be that guy to say it's his numbers, and it might just be more than that, but to start, try to get his wrap-up time to about, because what does it take to press a button, right? Because 99% of the time it's not interested, do not call, and then the 1% is when you're getting above that. So to have an average that high is, he's probably just sitting there for most of the day, and he'll probably wait a couple minutes here and there, and do some shit and probably doesn't want to work. Um, average weight, I'm not going to comment on because again, it could be you just don't have enough leads in your system, but click on uh, go to leads go to camp uh, go to campaign uh, okay, so you split them up yeah, the rest of these are old campaigns yeah, I mean, it's, uh, click on select phone groups. Uh, yeah, click on that. Um, and then a script, you know, he doesn't have a script in his system? No. Oh, it's just something. Yeah, that means that those campaigns aren't using any updated numbers. Oh, okay. So that yeah, could... Yeah, upload his, uh, script 
answer this. Yeah, so you need to have a script, but see, the, you need to change all those. Yeah, well, sometimes it doesn't, if you don't put the assigned DIDs, it's not going to take them from there. So go to your phone numbers. Set, set one of them as default. I don't know why, but it helps. Yep. Um, trying to think. What was the other thing I wanted to do? Mm. Go to your uh, queues again, or like leads. Uh, go to queues, uh, general leads, configuration. Yeah. Okay, I mean, everything else looks pretty normal. Um, I don't really know. I mean, if you really want to test if it's the market, you can add in the other market leads that you have and just have them call everything. And if he's only getting leads in one, but I mean, look, like, hold on. You can unshare, I guess. Let's see. Like we're calling the same list, right? And you can see Jackson, like these are today, like Jacksonville, 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 uh, St. Aug like this is on the same list, St. Augustine, um, Jacksonville. So like there's, it's not like these leads, Palm Coast is in there, Lakeland's in there, Jacksonville. We call a lot of market Jacksonville, so there's no difference between my agents. It's just, I would, I mean, whatever you feel the best, if you feel like you're just not, he doesn't, not enough training on the new script, it could be, it could have been even that phone number thing. I don't know, and he's just not, a lot of people are picking up, so he's getting a lot of spam because it'll take the old numbers for some reason, which are just spam numbers. Um, and most likely 99% chance it's the agent, if I'm being honest. So if you wanna get anything done, try to fix those numbers and see what happens then. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I've been looking to hire a lot of the people from the Philippines are now asking for like five dollars an hour. There's no way in hell I'm paying something. Uh, you, if I, they always come out and say that to me. I'm like, if you want to start at three fifty, I'll give you, I'll bump you up to, I'll bump you up every fifty cents for every deal you close up to five bucks. And then it's like, okay, I, I have a proven path to get to the five dollars. I'll eat shit for a couple leads, and then it'll be good. But I mean. I have people joining the program probably every single week and they're putting the post in the group for agents and we get them every single time. So they're there. You just have to interview them and find them. So. Going through it. Um, and I was going to share my screen in like one second. I ended up getting batched to come because property kept on being wrong about like the pool stuff and like all that crap. Yeah, batch is pretty good. Yeah, I had one motivated lead. Um, son has stage four cancer, which I don't know fully what that means, but I'm assuming that's like... That's like he's about to die, yeah. Um, let's see. So he's selling that to like help pay for medical bills or he's just... Uh, her son is getting like specialized treatment like somewhere. So I'm guessing that she wants to get rid of the house and move and be wherever he is going to be. Gotcha. Okay. Um, let me share. It's still the same. Oh yeah, I have to make you host again.
you're good. You just kind of want to help to comp it, or? Yeah, I just kind of want to get your like methodology and your mentality, so I can make sure that I get something, you know, correct. Okay. So it's a four two eighteen hundred. Is that confirmed? Uh, yes. Okay. Four two eighteen hundred. Looks like a decent home. Um. I am just going to show you on that on my end. Um, so it's four two eighteen hundred. I'm just on Zillow. This one's fourteen hundred so for two eighty. This one's twelve hundred so for two fifty. Two sixty. Let's try to find something. So this is obviously a hedge or portfolio buy. Let's see if we can find anything in the 300s. There's one in the 300s. This one is built 1988. Obviously, it's somewhat updated. So, when yours was built? 96. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if any of them are on market. So, listed. This one's listed for two fifty two. Pending offer. This one. Decent home. Nothing crazy updated. Let's say this sells at two fifty, right? What I'm gonna do is it does have a lot of land though, so that's fine. Let's do this one. So I'm sold not too long ago. Make sure it doesn't have a pool. No. Let's do the 282,000 uh, divided by 14. Uh, I'm gonna just do price per square foot. 190 a square foot. So I'm gonna times that by your 1809. Technically, that should put you at 345, right? Um, realistically, nothing is sold in the 300s in that neighborhood. So I would say max you're probably wanting to be is, I'd say you're pretty comfortable around the, like if I'm telling the seller what the ARV is, it's probably three, 315, right? How do you kind of get at that without like looking at the property condition? Well, that's ARV, so that's assuming it's uh, remodeled and like that's what the after repair value is. That's what ARV stands for, right? So, assuming like, and to be honest though, like this home is not an, this isn't repaired, right? This is just like a basic update. They might have done the carpet, they might have done some paint, but I'm not talking full remodel. Typically, when you're talking about after repair value, that's like good enough to put tenants in, but it's not some spec'd out. ADK rehab. Now, when you come across those types of homes, you'll know and like, you'll look in the neighborhood and you'll see just a ton of flips, a ton of crazy, like you'll go to the Zillow, you'll click on this estimate and whatever, and it's gonna show like, this home is beautiful. Granite countertops, f full stainless steel appliances. And then you can go check the price history if it, they sold it for 300, probably you're buying it at like 150 or something if they're gonna put that much money into it. But this just looks like your average like rental. None of these homes are being sold fixed up and crazy remodeled. So, I mean, typically the tough part is like, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna be conservative and say, this is probably worth 300,000 as long as it's just normal condition. Um, does, do you know what they were asking for it? That was the part where I was originally confused on because I thought renovated. That's what I was confused about the whole ARV. I was like, I should yeah. see the full. Like full spec out remodel, that could probably go for 350, but nobody's going to buy a 350 home. Nobody wants to buy the nicest home in the neighborhood, right? Yeah, that makes sense. 
make sense. She was looking for 300, new roof, new dishwasher, good condition, new carpet. So I think it will kind of match with the rest of those houses. Yeah, it probably is just around that. I'm just going the conversation with her as I'm like, totally understand. Have, why haven't you listed it at that price, right? For one, if you're gonna go list it at that price after paying realtor fees, commissions and everything, maybe subtract 15, 20,000, I always highball it a little bit, but you're probably walking away with 280, right? But you're also dealing with 15, 20 people walking through the home. They're trying to make you fix up a couple of things with contingencies. You're not really closing on your timeline. You could go down that route. Obviously, I'm not gonna, I'd be a really bad investor if I bought at retail. Realistically, I'd probably wanna be around like 250, 260. What do you think? And then you work it like, I, I wouldn't mind contracting that at 265, if I'm being honest, 270 maybe, if it's actually in pretty good condition, because you could probably sell that for, to a hedge fund. I'd push it out at 280, 285 and see what the bites are. Okay, that makes sense. And what about that 250 next to the 360K that your mouse is on? Would you consider that house, but that's like way lower? That's a lot, I mean, the 600 square feet less. So it's not the best comp, but I mean, this one and this one are same square feet, but let's, this one definitely sold a lot old. Oh, this was a month earlier. So they really pushed this and they probably they got it. So let me go look. So this is what I like to do a lot. And I'm just gonna use PropStream because I know it really quick. Most of the time, I don't have, you don't have to tell yourself or convince yourself what the hedge funds are gonna buy because comping it, I'm gonna go look at what other people actually bought it for. I wouldn't be surprised if see the one next to it, so this one, this is just probably an average buyer bought it. No, let's look at six, 266, 42, 1590. There's a hedge fund, right? I don't know who that is. But they bought it in eh condition. They bought it at 266 at the beginning of this year. So you're contracting that at 250, 260, maybe 265. Yours a little bit square feet. They probably buy your home for 275, 280 ish. Okay. Do you have like any type of like a math or something, something to get from the 300k ARV down to it? Um, so we did a thing in our system in our podio where I think it's not really um, I mean we let's say it's a 300k home maybe if you want to be comfortable assume the hedge funds gonna buy at 95% and then subtract your fee and maybe some repairs and that'll leave you enough room like this one I did the 285 300 times 95% leaves you at 285, let's say minus a 15, 20K assignment fee, you're at 260, 250. That's probably where you want to be at, very comfortably. Uh, 250K home times nine, uh, obviously, puts you at 237, 500. I always try to make like 15, 20K, let's say 20K max. It's 217. I'm gonna probably start her at 200 and see how far up I can, she can bring me.